my life was perfect. I mean, everything that I've hoped and dreamed for is, uh, my life's just going great. I never dreamed that I'd be going for a mammogram. Uh, it wasn't time. I'm aware of my body, but um, had never felt anything. There, there wasn't a lump. There, I, I didn't feel bad. You know, usually it's an older age or you hear about your grandmother or your aunt, you know, that had cancer. So I never even really thought about it. I was diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma on November the 14th, 2012. I was diagnosed um, in 2009. I first um, learned I had cancer December the 8th, 2012. I was diagnosed in February of 2000. It's Monday, it's noon time, and I'm running errands around town, you know, like I usually do at lunchtime, and my phone rings. And he's talking, but it's almost like the uh, Peanuts cartoon, you know, wah, wah, wah. I'm hearing it, but I'm not hearing it. But then they, they uh, called my doctor and said it was um, positive for breast cancer, and that was quite a shock. Going into the doctor's office in October of 2012, I never thought I'd walk out a few days later with a diagnosis, diagnosis of breast cancer. First thing Monday morning when I got to work, the doctor was calling me, asking me to come back in, that he needed to discuss my memo with me. This huge rug is pulled out from under you because, um, again, I'm thinking, this, my life is great. My life is at such a wonderful point. How could this happen? Because all I can think of is, I'm positive. This result was positive. I have cancer. And that afternoon, I faced, I faced the reality that I had stage three breast cancer. I thought I'm too young to be doing this. Actually, I wouldn't have found it out if I wouldn't have been pregnant. So I was pregnant with cancer. I work at Centralized Scheduling Memorial Hospital. I schedule patients for mammograms and complete workup if necessary. And sometimes when you're talking to the patients on the phone, I try to give them encouraging words, you know, to follow up with their mammograms. At the same time, I didn't think it would happen to me or I could be talking to myself. I told my husband the other day, I said, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go, to, I don't want to go and have surgery. He said, I know you don't want to. He said, but you got to. And he said, just think about it, you're here. I said, I don't want to lose my breast. He said, but we're not going to lose you. It went fast. I could feel the lump and it was in, in my lymph nodes under my arm. It was, it was uh, fast. I did not have to go through treatment. I chose to have a breast reduction where they went in and removed the tissues. Uh, and after they got the report back from the lab, it was confirmed that all of the malignancy was removed. My very first treatment was very difficult. My thought was, here we go, it's starting and I didn't know what to expect. I had myself worked up about the side effects and, and what was about to, to start happening and that, you know, there's, there's no stopping this. We've got to do this. In the beginning, all I wanted was it out, get it out. All of us have been so touched by cancer, but all of a sudden, it's me. It was delivered to me through my faith. God had told me before that. I trust, always trusted in him, so I knew that this is going to be okay. At that time, they only had like one or two uh, chemotherapy treatments you could take with being pregnant. I was told that if I didn't abort the baby, that I'd probably only live to see him turn two months old because of how fast being pregnant accelerates cancer. It was a tough go at the beginning, but after I got over the first six weeks, things started beginning to get easier. They couldn't tell me why I got cancer and so I wanted to take away anything that could possibly 
get cancer again. It's a personal choice. I looked forward to my treatments because that meant I was one closer to being done. When I first was diagnosed, everybody who I would talk to, they're, Jessica, you're going to be okay. Yes, I am going to be okay. I have no choice to, but to be okay. We went on a long journey. <laughs> we survived it. My son is 13 years old now. Don't ever take that. Take it for granted that it's it's that it's not going to happen to you. You have to pay attention to your body. Your body's trying to tell you something. And uh, luckily, I paid attention. That's one reason why I try to encourage all my sisters, all my sisters in Christ, anyone that I talk to, that it's important that they follow up with their mammograms. It was just really a miraculous journey for me, and it was, a, it was more of a blessing for me What's kind of neat about going through a process like this is that you do become so much closer with your family, with your friends. It um, gives you that opportunity to tell somebody you love them when you, you know, uh, with friends especially. You know, we don't every day go, oh, I love you so much. But it is such an opportunity just to be able to tell somebody how much you care about them. One foot in front of the other. And some days, literally, it was one foot than the next one, but I made it, and you'll make it too. Somehow.